and my girlfriend called me over. Obviously we're looking at the backside of a rifle here. Yeah, happy I brought the missus. First banger of this trip. That's a, that's a nice start of your uh, metal detecting experience, I'd say. So we just arrived at our first location of the day. We're currently in Germany on the Western Front. We picked some really good days to go detecting, not. It's gonna be 35 degrees the whole weekend, so it's gonna be harsh work, but uh, yeah, you gotta do what you gotta do, right? We're finally here, so let's give it a try. Right now we're standing at the location of a former RED camp. Probably they left some relics behind, so we're gonna see if we can find some of that history. While we are just swinging around our detectors, my eye caught something. You can bear with me here. Right here is the foundation of a barrack. Like that going in a square. It's a concrete foundation. That's cool. Interesting that that is still here. Yeah. There you can see it more clearly. Then I just stroll some meters this way. And uh, the first signal of the day for me, it's a war coin. One clinic, and as you can see, there is an eagle with swastika on it. Well, that's a very cool first find. That's nice evidence of what went on here. Let's see if you can find more. Yeah, I'm really happy that at least we have some uh, canopy over our heads. That sun is just lethal. Um, but I do have something nice to show you. Rob just came walking by and he found some jewelry. Nice gem or some sort of badge. We are on a women RED camp. So <laughs> probably it was worn by one of those women. That's very special. Look at that. And a nice coin, 1935 it says. I'm running over to my girlfriend. She told me she found something cool. Yeah, that is a very recognizable shape. This is a part of a, an MG15 magazine. And the MG15 I think was mostly used for anti-aircraft purposes. Initially, I think later in the war that they just used this for general infantry purposes. So there would have been 75 rounds in each chamber and the gun would be placed in the middle. Yeah, so somewhere over there in the back, my girlfriend found that MG15 magazine lid. And not far away, look at what I just dug up. You can see it over there already. I already had a peek at it. This is a Gewehr 43 magazine. And I think it's, it's still filled. I think it's still filled. Wow, look at that. Let's get the brush out. See if you can expose that a little bit. Feels quite heavy. Yeah, I see it, oh, yeah. I see it there, yeah. The rounds there, yeah, very clearly still. Fully loaded, German Gewehr 43 magazine. That's a neat find. I started shouting because I said I've just found a metal. You can see a leaf pattern on here. Uh, so I think the metal is broken, but there is more in here. So I wanted to do, the, to do this as a live dig. Let's see if there's more. Yeah, there's another piece. Does it look like a flower? Is it the brooch or... I think it was... I think it's a rose. Yeah. It looks like a rose. Here. Yeah. And this... Yeah, that's, that's beautiful still. I think that must have belonged to it. This is it, I think. Yeah, something like that. Oh, I'm not sure. Is this a... Is this a personal item or is it a military award? We didn't really find out more about this artifact. We think it's a personal item from a soldier, something meaningful that he brought from home. All right, sun is going down, but that was a nice first exploration. Tomorrow is a brand new day. We're gonna drink some beers, get some sleep, and then we'll be off to a fresh start tomorrow. See you there. All right, so we just arrived at this beautiful location and maybe you can see it here. Here's the contours of a former barrack. And uh, right behind me, here you can see a concrete slab. There was a barrack foundation here as well. Rob just pointed out the remains of this barrack wall. We're definitely in the right location. These should be fruitful patches of ground. Let's go detecting and uh, see what we find here.
I'm digging on the side of a barrack here and I just found a coin over there. And my girlfriend over here just found her first find of the day, also a coin. There we go, it's a German panic. The eagle with swastika is very clear. I think it says 1940. Again, you can see really clear contours of a barrack. And right next to it, I found something familiar. I found this uh, toothpaste tube and it's from Blendox. That was a really famous German brand, used a lot in the war. And there you can see it reads Blendox. Me and Rob in the back there were negotiating about a rifle round and my girlfriend called me over. She was actually asking me if she should dig this signal. I'm not sure if I advised her to do so, but she luckily did because she started shouting. <laughs> I think we have something interesting there. So uh, it's a good thing you called us over because obviously we're looking at the back side of a rifle here. This should be where the trigger was. Yes. <laughs> uh, this is her first day, uh, well, second day of detecting ever actually. So I think she's doing well. And um, yeah, you can see the, it, the soil moves there. So it's definitely continuing up there, this rifle. So I think the nice thing to do here is to expose this and to carefully dig it out so you can enjoy this moment with us. Yeah, it's actually stuck under a concrete foundation. <laughs> but we're, we're gonna be able to get it out, no worries. So the funny thing here is, like this is the surface level. This part of the trigger mechanism has been sticking out of the soil for over 75 years. Yeah, happy I brought the missus. First banger of this trip. That's a, that's a nice start of your uh, metal detecting experience, I'd say. Beauty. There we go. So tell me, how does it feel to hold a rifle in your hands that you just found a second ago? It feels great. <laughs> So the bolt is missing, they deactivated this rifle. The bolt would have been in here, it's gone. The trigger is still there though, that's interesting. This is the part where they would aim over, there would have been numbers on there, they could put this up and down for distance variation. And this is the, the weapon sling part and the muzzle end. That's what I call teamwork. So Mauser K90K rifle, standard issue rifle. I think maybe 17 million of these were produced and it was the standard rifle of the German infantry. So the wood has rotten away as we usually see from a soil finds. My girlfriend recently started her very own Instagram, Fe98K. Go and give her a follow if you want to see more. So this is what they would see back in the day. So a couple meters besides the Mauser k 90 k rifle against this big tree, I found a German flare casing look at that so they fired these flare casings to uh, you know indicate attacks or if something was going on they could uh, notify the other soldiers by firing one of these and this one is unfired you can see the filling is still in there so I'm not going to be taking that with us right as you can see everybody's gathered up it's one of those moments I hope at least because I just discovered something round. It has a bit of a shape like a metal. I'm not completely sure, but I thought let's let's do this together. All right, let's see. It could be something older than World War II, actually. Oh yes, yes, yes. I think that's definitely older. Some sort of brooch, some sort of jewelry. Pocket watch. Yeah. I think. Or, or maybe just a, a, like this, this 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 jewelry thing people had around their necks that, that they could carry a photo of their relatives and mm -hmm. their loved ones. There. Yeah. Really old. Yeah. Really old. Picture. It could have been a souvenir from a soldier, you know, something he carried with him from home. Some stuff I found here. Yeah, that's a lead seal. Oh wow, you can see a really clear pattern on that, so that's older too. This thing could be a Roman coin. It's really thick and heavy. But we don't really we haven't really discovered anything on it yet. But yes, yeah, so there's so there's older stuff here too. That's interesting. On these trips, finding ammunition is inevitable. And uh, once again found proof of that. I already found some US 50 caliber shell casings. And now I found a complete round. Look at that, unfired. That's interesting, usually I just find the shell casings. It's cool to see it in, uh, in its complete state. Something definitely went on there. Very cool to find uh, American relics here as well. So they definitely sweep this area from the German occupation. So right next to the forest trail you can see there, well, we're all metal detecting over here and as you can see everybody's walking towards me right now it's because i started shouting 
And it might just be a moment where I'm gonna dig up a lot of big brass shell casings from field cannons. You can see a brass one here, at least I believe it's a big shell casing. And there is also one over here. So let's see exactly what's down here together. Maybe you can help out, let's see if we can discover there. Like this is on the surface, look at this. Yeah, there is some movement there, but maybe we it's should... Bigger. It's a lot bigger, I think. Yeah, that's what it's supposed to be from the field cannon. <laughs> that big. Yeah, there is some movement there. Yeah, 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 there it goes. There we go. Yes! <laughs> it's a big brass shell casing, look at that, from a field cannon. Wow, man! Oh, this is the original, original gold shine. Yeah, you think this is from a howitzer? I'm not sure. I'm it's really not. happy with that, guys. I never found them in brass and so large. Usually, if I find big shell casings, they're always made from iron, rotten condition. Yeah. You can even read the whole backside here. Yeah, yeah we should clean out the dirt. Yes. Yeah, that's that's crazy. They had some big field cannon here. Yeah, this is American howitzer, yeah, 105, howitzer, yeah. 105 millimeters. That's, that's cool. 1944, guys. The Americans were here. The U.S. Army. <laughs> All right, let's, I think there's gonna be more, I feel yeah. another shell casing here, guys. Yeah. There's one more here, there, and there, and there's one here. Shall we, shall we first take this one out? This should be easy picking. Oh. Yeah, that is almost the surface find. Yeah, it's the same yeah, caliber. Also, yeah. Check it up a bit, yeah. The other there one was, uh, so I'm really there. wondering how many there's gonna be here, but <sighs> crazy. I can probably show you some footage of what that original cannon did and how it looked like. 1944. 1944. Yeah, that's late, quite late war actually for production of these shell casings. Okay, so we are just exposing some soil here to remove this shell casing, and we spot another shell casing, and that's right here. Okay. It's a makoko. Yeah, yeah, bread. It's made from brass. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> wow! <laughs> no, 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 there we go. Well, she, she's got some pace going there. No stopping her. <laughs> After she found that rifle, she's just uh, full of energy. Here's another one. No way! Oh, man. Wow. No. <laughs> this pace is going way too high. I probably don't even have to cut this footage. Yeah, so Rob just confirmed. You can see this one has been fired. The primer has a dent in it. You can see that, that spot there in the middle. Yeah, so we got five pieces already. Let's see if there's more. There's Rob with the helping hand. At least now I know why my detector was going crazy. This whole area might be filled with these brass casings. We do have more here. There we go, that's number six. Yeah, so there's number six. And there's number seven. <laughs> that's, not, that's not too bad of a color, I must yeah. say. These 105 mm shell casings originate from an M2A1 US howitzer which entered in production in 1941. It quickly gained a reputation for accuracy and a powerful punch. The M2A1 became the standard US light field howitzer in World War II. The weapon was heavy for its caliber, but this was because the gun was designed to be durable. We found seven of these brass casings in total, clearly indicating that we discovered a US artillery position over here. As the sun kept beating down on us and temperatures rising above 35 degrees Celsius, we decided to do some more detecting later in the evening when it cooled down. We actually found an interesting field near our holiday home that we decided to try out. This is the last from today. Sun is going down. We've actually detected this, uh, this field over here. Found quite a lot of coins. Most of them are German. I think this one is from 1912 even, quite old. These are from the 20s and 30s. Pretty cool to find uh, that many coins. But the one thing I wanted to show you from this field, that's this over here, look at that. It's some sort of weapon shield, and there's a part with writing on it, there's a lion there, this is the like coat of arms. And on the back, there was a pin there, so maybe this went on, on a helmet, but this is definitely pre-World War II, I think this is even pre-World War I. That's a really cool and unexpected find. That's the interesting thing about old fields, you can basically find anything. We found out that this emblem originates from a German World War I Pickelhaube spiked helmet. Specifically, this emblem is from the Bavarian Army, which was a part of the Imperial German Army. 
Well, it's the last day of detecting. We just met up with Daniel. Actually, we're going to try out an SS training camp today. Um, should be a big dump place there. Daniel hasn't used the sifter there yet, so this is gonna be promising. Gonna try our luck and I'll keep you updated. All right, we just arrived at the dump pit that Daniel pointed out. So probably we're gonna start working on the edges here. And as you can see, this is all still left here. There's some small bottles, porcelain bits, cooking pots. There's even a freaking stove top down there. All right, we're almost good to go with the sifter. So, yeah, let's get going. All right, so we were just working on the first scoops of sand and we actually already found the first cool thing. Well, we started digging right here because there's debris there. And look at this, I just found this cigarette case. And I'm not sure if there's something written on it, we still have to find that out. But as I opened this up, I noticed a piece of paper in there. Look at that. Let's get that out. I think this is a freaking bus ticket. It's talking about that it's valid for three days. Strangely enough, this bus ticket appeared to be from the post-war period. The cigarette case, however, has some carvings made by a Wehrmacht soldier. We can read Oslau 1944. We have no idea how this bus ticket ended up in there. Maybe it's from another digger who came by bus, found the case and forgot to take it home. Who knows? So we moved the sifter a bit to try out a new area over there. And Rob just started shouting with his first proper find of the day. First proper find of the sifter. Yeah, there we go. It's a Luftwaffe color tab. So it's a seagull with two pins on the back. Yeah, look at that. So the more a soldier had on his shoulders, the higher its rank would be. Yeah, that's a nice start, man. Yeah, we're doing well here. Daniel just shared with us that he has never found any American buttons in this dump. And Rob just pulled out this US 13 star button. There we go. That's a really neat button. We'll put it to the side with the rest and uh, see if we can find more. Definitely it's way more packed here with porcelain bits. Just look at what's laying in the sifter here. This is from one sifter, just like five buttons already and we had some German Koppelhaken they're called. They are yeah, some sort of belt buckles, let's say belt hooks actually. So we have two of those. There's another button here. Let me just put that with the rest and I'll show you immediately what we found more so far. We're only at it for like half an hour so You'll probably find more, but interestingly enough, there's also some American stuff like Nescafe coffee. That's lemon juice right there. Uh, this is water purification powder actually, I think that's also American. That's interesting. Yeah, we're doing the final scoops of sand right now. It's time to pack up, the heat is getting to us and we're running out of time. So let me just give you a small overview of the finds here. And look at all of those buttons. I don't know, maybe we have, we have at least 50 pieces. There's also an American toothbrush here. Should be marked with made in the USA, right there. It's a nice one. A lot of these belt hooks from the Wehrmacht. We haven't found any SS belt hooks, unfortunately. My buddy Daniel has, but this time we were not that lucky. Orange juice powder. Look at that, I think this is actually the screw cap from a German canteen, that's, that's interesting as well. Well, time to pack up guys. And that's the conclusion of yet another adventure. Thank you all for watching, especially my patrons. Go and check it out if you haven't already. Don't miss out on the exclusive content you can find there. And I'll see you next time. Cheers.